Thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast, In Search of Soil. For more great clips and full episodes, check out the links in the description below. In thinking about this fungal bacterial balance in soils, one of the things I always hear a lot of times right here on YouTube in the comment section is forests grow in fungally dominated soils and herbaceous plants or grasslands grow in bacterially dominated soils. I think that statement is oversimplified and overgeneralized. When you hear that statement, what are your thoughts on it and what does the science say about that statement? When somebody says that kind of sentence, it is true, but it's minimizing the balancing that has to go on. If you're growing weeds, you know, so if I can use my hands here, uh, if your weeds, if your uh, fungi are down here at the, you know, almost nobody home, and your bacteria are up here at, oh my gosh, you know, 15,000 micrograms per gram of soil for the bacteria, this is set to grow weeds. You've got to bring that bacterial population down by increasing the fungi. These two guys compete with each other. The, you know, the normal community is going to, the bacteria are going to come down as your fungi come up. And so now you've got a situation where you might be growing brassica. Um, coal and kale crops require that kind of balance of bacteria and fungi in the soil. Well, if that's not what you want to be growing, you want to get that fungal to bacterial ratio closer together. Now you're growing tomatoes, potatoes, you know, large, all of the solanaceae that we um, like so much. As we want to grow highly productive grasses, you want to get both the bacteria and fungi at the same biomass within the soil. The higher you can get that biomass, and notice my hands are now going up together, if we can get that balance, we'll get higher yields, the higher that fungal to bacterial ratio becomes. So how, what's the maximum yield that we can get in anybody's field? Well, we haven't gotten to that point where we don't get higher yields and higher yields and higher yields. We We've got more research to do. What is that highest point? There's got to be a limit, but we haven't reached it yet, so I can't tell you what that is. But we can double and triple, quadruple, 10 times, 50 times more yield if you can get that biology going up higher and higher in your soil. But what if you want to grow shrubs? You want to grow grapevines. You want to grow blueberries. Well, then your fungi have to keep going up. Because that's a condition that um, is going to grow much healthier. Blueberries, blackberries, wine grapes, whatever kinds of shrubs you, you want to be growing. If you want a deciduous forest, a healthy deciduous forest, that fungal component has to keep going up. Notice that the bacteria are not increasing, but they're not decreasing either. It's just that fungal component is going up. So you got to have the bacteria in there. And what people mostly don't really actually hear is fungal dominated. It's not like fungi are the only thing in that soil. There's just more fungi than there are bacteria. So they got to listen really hard when somebody says that sentence. When If you want old growth cedar, you want you know all those beautiful trees down in California that are huge trunks, you know, all of those. Um, redwood trees and such, that fungal biomass has, has to be even higher. 75% of the volume or weight of a gram of soil should be fungal biomass in a healthy conifer forest. Certainly during that winter into the growing season, you should see that huge amount of fungal biomass in the soil. Well, but now predators of the fungi are going to come along and start eating those fungi, releasing the nutrients that were being held, that were prevented from leaching out of that soil held in the fungal biomass. The pred predators come along, eat the, the fungi. Now the, um, the trees are getting all the nutrition that they need. But you might go out in the middle of the summertime and see that you don't have 75% of a cup of soil being fungal biomass. 
but they'll regrow. Come the late fall, when all of that litter material falling to the surface of the soil um, is decomposed by the fungi, the fungi start growing and completely tie all that soil together so it doesn't leach, it doesn't erode, it doesn't wash down the hill, it stays in place. And so very necessary functions to maintain a healthy conifer forest. In thinking about that, in a farming context, are you trying to be closer to a one-to-one -one fungal to bacterial ratio? You want to pay attention to what the crop it is that you want to grow. What are the balances that it needs? So where is your crop in the successional system? And then you want to mimic, you want to get that food web going. If I take it as a given that those ratios can change given the time of year, is it important to know when you're taking that measurement and that reading? Because you're probably going to get a different reading in summer versus winter. And if you try and balance your soils off just one season, you might get yourself out of whack. Yep. So in um, natural systems, you, you need to pay attention to what time of year it is. In agricultural systems, we're disturbing those systems all the time. And it's almost like we're setting it back to ground zero. Not where we want to be for a lot of our more um, higher level plants to be healthy and happy. So we want to get that fungal to bacterial biomass ratio at the proper level right from the beginning, right when that seed's put into the ground and starts to grow or when that a perennial crop that you might have, you know, shrubs and bushes and things, you want to recognize what time of year it is and realize this is the time of year where we've got to have um, more fungal biomass in their lower bacteria because we want to have beautiful big blueberries that taste really sweet and actually have a blueberry flavor to them. That's one thing I always notice about the blueberries grown with good biology is they actually taste like blueberries as opposed to something that's grown in chemical lands and it's just mush you're eating water yeah and it's like this is not tasty so getting the proper biology really lends so much more flavor to anything that you want to grow thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast in search of soil for more great clips and full episodes Check out the links in the description below.